Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at our Panetti's Spellbreaker build that has almost completely cleared ultimate and is a really fun and really awesome build that leveled super fast, like maybe a week and a half between the elite video I posted before and getting this far in ultimate has happened. So it it it's a very very fast leveling build, it's a very fast clearing build, and it's a really easy build to just play and make. So going into the skills, firstly we're gonna look at the Nightblade side of things. We max out Pneumatic Burst and max out Shadow Dance. This is gonna be our core of defense because we'll be able to keep this up the entire time um, we're playing the character. So it's gonna be a constant heal. It's gonna have it's gonna give us a ton of health regen and total speed coupled with 20% just pure avoidance of everything. So this plus my Vin Sphere is a great core of defenses for the character. We also have one point in Veil of Shadow to get us to the 10 points in Night's Chill and we're not really gonna be doing a we're not really seeking out melee but it's gonna happen like you just get hoarded in this game at various times so um, the the negative cold resist is what we're going for on here and um, while we aren't actively seeking out melee it's gonna happen so we might as well just have a benefit for it and reducing resistances is one of my favorite ways of building your own damage up in ultimate so for me Night's Chill is definitely a 10 out of 10 Blade Barrier gets one point because it's a great way to it's it's a great you know oh poopy button so you just pop it and then um, you're safe but it's also a great way to avoid getting hit while letting your cooldowns recharge because that three seconds will actually allow pneumatic burst you know time to recharge and like mirror Varakti's time to recharge we have eight points in phantasmal armor because with our gear this will bring it up to the 12 cap and um, we're using this for its pierce res and its armor which is super helpful for defense as well um, I, I don't really think I need a point in Anatomy of Murder. I think I've got enough. Um, I, I don't really see any, any need for the tiny bit of cunning and damage to humans it would provide. So uh, that covers all of the Nightblade stuff. And there really isn't any reason to go much deeper into it. Merciless Repertoire could be a good place to dump some points. But getting to it requires 12 more points. And it would require, I think it's a, is it a 12? It might be a 10 out of 10 ability. Or a 12 out of 12 ability. So actually getting getting that there and getting it leveled up would take a lot of points. And the one thing about a Panetti's character is you're pretty tight on your points because you got to level up four things on your Kana side of things. I'd also maybe consider working in Ring of Steel with Ring of Frost, but I don't really have the space on my bar for it. It's a good ability, but I mean, again, you'd have, I'd have to spend points to get to it. And even though it's sort of a one-point two-point wonder it'd be like oh i'd be spending seven points to get to it so um yeah we only need to go to rank 20 in the nightblade tree and you're golden on the arcana side of things um we're gonna start at panetti's because you need it at 16 16 it's your main attack and then each other one i have at 10 and i don't have them capped out because i need these points spent elsewhere and really when you get them about there uh i think think it's going to be about 14 points each maybe more um we'll look at the the total pointage after i put my gear back on but yeah you don't really need to like you can you can also futz with these depending on what you need out of it like you could maybe take points out of supercharge and put them elsewhere if you need it this is a really flexible set of abilities that you can take points out of to to fuel your other stuff generally though you'd want to keep it at about 12 out of 12 with your plus all plus to all skills gear and plus to skills gear and um you know maybe in the future of this character i might do that and put points in like a lectures or something but uh 10 on all three of these the uh, scounders elemental exchange line we just one point wonder all of them mirror Varaktis, we one point wonder it we have myvin sphere eight because i like to keep that at about 12 out of 12 between 10 out of 10 out of 12 and 12 out of 12 is usually how i usually what I shoot for on um final points on that after plus the skills and we one point conversion we one point devastation 
obviously one point of lecture is with absolute zero max out inner focus one point on arcane will and nullification six on mental alacrity because i like to keep it at 10 because after you go up past 10 you get some diminishing returns on what it provides you so i generally like to keep it at about nine or ten uh fabric of reality is maxed out on this character as is star pact so between Fab fabric of reality and star pact and our gear we're gonna have a lot of bonuses to cold lightning fire and aether and panetti's uses all four you have elemental on the main missile you have aether damage and percent fire damage from distortion you have more elemental percent elemental and um electrocute damage from supercharged and you have more aether from proliferation because we have so much aether damage devastation actually is a really nice ability for us to have um and because we have like yeah it just all rounds out for all four of our damage types being really nice this is at 22 of 16 that's not 26 of 16 but I'm missing some gear for it, and um, I'll get into the gearing when I get there. So these are all at 16 each, and I mean, it's a possibility to maybe take the four points out to bring them down to 12 and scatter those points elsewhere to, like, max out other things, but I, th I think I'm comfortable with them at 16 of 12. Um, Escondras gets up to 5, and then Elemental Balance is up to 6 because of my Relic. We have Myven Sphere at 12, 5, 5. You know, it's all it's all distributing nicely. We got 10 on Devastation, which is pretty awesome. Uh, 16 on Star Pack, 19 on Fabric of Reality, 20 for, for Inner Focus. Nightblade side of things, um, it's pretty much plus 2 to everything. Plus 4 on Phantasmal Armor thanks to the gearing, which I'll get to after we look at Devotion. So, for the Devotion Tree... Um, the first ability I went for was Elemental Storm from Rowan's Crown. An Elemental Storm is a lot of damage over its duration. And um, the Crown is actually a really good bit of DPS boosting for your damage types. And um, also it has the Elemental Damage Reduction that I really love so much for, uh, for dealing damage in Ultimate. Um... I believe I just barreled through this to just straight up get Rowan's Crown first. So it would be something like you put a point on Crossroads for um, Ascendant, then pick up the Throne, respec that point, go Crossroads for Eldrick, pick up the Hawk. Um, that's, what do we need again? It'd be uh, four and six. Oh, I think I went with the Spider first. Spider's a, a not bad set of bonuses. Um, and then you can respect those two points and pick up the the crown. I picked up the hawk because it's just a really good offensive bonus. And then afterwards, I kind of wanted to build up defenses because I don't really think I, you need another ability aside from Elemental Storm. And I mean, there are possibilities you could go for, like getting Elemental Seeker might be really fun. But uh, the storm just works so well with Panetti's Replicating Missile. That I think directly after that, I went instantly for all of the defensive abilities I like to go for. Which started by going into Primordial and Chaos. I generally like to have Yulo unlocked so I can pick up the Elemental Poison Chaos Res node she has. Um, the Eel is a great synergizing ability with um, all of our Avoidance. Because we get two more percent on both. And then we get some Pierce Res out of it. Which is a really nice... Um, little little constellation it's also you know five primordial which is a great boost for getting to other places for just three points um i went and i picked up the vulture because of the bleeding resistance and uh vitality resistance which also lets us pick up the behemoth so we can get a lot of health out of the behemoth and i didn't complete it on this character because it wasn't really necessary i did pick up the giant's blood ability um oakland's lantern is an awesome caster uh constellation and we also use it to unlock law so if you have a caster offhand and a dagger scepter dagger or scepter um it's a great great constellation and that unlocks law which lets us pick up the crane which will unlock uh torgo here and i mean you can invest a little more in law to maybe get to the scales 
Um, and you can invest maybe a little more in Primordial to get to the Solemn Watcher. But uh, I didn't bother with that. I think because I had to go get the crown first. And there wasn't any other really synergizing things with um, Primordial. Uh, I couldn't really get to Solemn Watcher. But that's okay. We got, we got good stuff out of this. Out of our Devotion Tree. Next up, items. So, this character is running the Clairvoyant set. All four pieces. Because this set is ridiculously amazing. And it's even more amazing for our character it's it's actually it's actually kind of broken i mean not really but it's it's just the the four clairvoyant pieces like they provide such a great mix of offense and defense and the clairvoyant ability clairvoyance ability for pneumatic burst and electric flash freeze and mirror varactes and devastation and Blade Barrier, Nullification, they're all the cooldown abilities, and when they when that ability procs for them to get the 100% cooldown reduction, it's awesome. <laughs> so, I, I do highly recommend getting a Clairvoyant set. Um, I pretty much pilfered the one from my, my Aether Ray character, and then I actually got like a new chest piece drop, and a new uh, wand drop. So, yeah, it's... It's really great to just have these floating around and then throw them on, on a character. Uh, his pants are the Empowered Hermit's Leg Guards, and these should really be switched out. Um, I just haven't found any good pants for him. And uh, I use them for leveling, in all honesty. That tiny bit of experience, bonus experience is really nice. But uh, they're actually really good all-around pants. Um, but yeah, I'd probably trade them out for something else. I just don't have any good pants for this character. Likewise, the Spell Sage boots, um, I could trade those out for, for better boots, but I just don't have any right now. And he's actually running a rare. So the Elite Harvest Grips, um, for that nice offensive ability and casting speed, uh, with like getting plus 20, 30, 20, well about 30, 30, 30 on all of our stats is actually really fun. A really fun little bonus, um, especially because we, we need a lot of physique and, and, and spirit for this, uh, for this character. Um, his offhand is the Tome of Names, which is a really awesome Panetti's offhand, but it's a placeholder, because I want to get the full Invoker set. I have the Invoker Shard, which I showed off in the previous video, and this is really, really cool, because when he gets hit, um, he sort of gets these, like, swirling missiles around him that actually deal some pretty good damage, and they synergize really well with Devastation and... Um, blade barrier because he can get hit and these missiles are floating around him pops his blade barrier or pops dev pops devastation pops blade barrier he's hidden behind um, the barrier for three seconds while crap is still dying so it's actually a really cool item for this setup the rest of the invoker set is a ring a ring and the offhand which i don't have any of so that's why we still kind of got a crappy blue ring and a crappy even crappier blue ring but this is kind of just showing off how powerful i guess that the panetti's build is that you can run this old crappy gear on it in ultimate and you'll mostly be fine like he could probably do this all in blues and he was doing it in blues for a while because i i moved this over kind of later in the game and it replaced his uh paragon of the arcanum set which i thought he'd be keeping his through his entire career but i realized that the clairvoyant set is just that awesome um, his medal is a badge of mastery, which is an eh, badge of mastery. His belt is phantom thread girdle because it's the spell breaker go-to belt, in my opinion. More chance to avoid melee attacks as well. His relic is a scounder's balance, which I think is almost made for a Panetti's character. Um, it's just, it's casting speed and skill cost reduction with, you know, fire damage helps Panetti's, uh, missiles and... The imbalance is Fire Cold, which is really great. Um, I only wish I had a completion bonus on some Panetti's abilities. And uh, for components, I am running a Wrathstone and an Enchanted Flint for the Aether and Fire Auras. That's sort of shoring up fire damage because it, it was the lowest of our damage types, and I can show that right now. Um, so Fire is our lowest of the three elementals, but we got, you know... 600s on all of them and then we have almost 700 aether and i mean laughably enough we have 525 chaos because of the clairvoyant set but um yeah we got about 600 upper 600s 
on three of the four, and the fourth is still in 600. Um, going forward, uh, I would definitely want the Invoker's Shard, the Invoker's um, Element set. This would also shore up our Fire and Lightning. Not that our Lightning really needs shoring up. But yeah, it would give us more fire damage and bring our fire damage up to the others. And we'd actually get a lot of lightning damage out of it. Um, because I think one of the rings is a lightning-based ring. And then one of the rings is a fire-based ring. And I think the offhand is fire-lightning combo. So yeah, between all of this, we'd, we'd have uh, all of our elemental types just really, really high. And I haven't, I don't actually know what the uh, Invoker's Fury is. Um, mark your foe with an arcane sigil that leaves them vulnerable to your elemental slot. I would assume it's elemental reduction, but I mean, all the other abilities look just really nice on it. So that covers all of our setup, and I'm going to find a place to go to do a thing. Um, and as an interlude, uh, I forgot to say, I did a 2 to 1 split between physique and spirit. So two points in physique for every one in spirit. A couple points ended up cunning, but... Um, yeah, generally 2 to 1 spirit, uh, physique spirit. Components in the rest of his gear, which I forgot to show off, was um, ballistic plating on the chest, ancient armor plate on the pants, anti-venom salve on the belt, an attuned lodestone on the metal, mark of the traveler on the boots, spell woven threads on the gloves, silk swatch on shoulders, a rune stone on the head, arcane lens on the um, amulet. Rings both have Mark of Illusions, and <laughs> you'll see in the video why he suddenly has this. Okay, I have to get the uh, the Tome of Fates. Tome of Fates is for um, the outcasts. It's in it's in the lower parts of Steps of Torment. I think I have a skeleton key floating around to get there. So, um. Part one of our strategy is to maintain pneumatic burst. Pretty easy to do. Do I have a skeleton key? I have two skeleton keys. It means if I screw up and die, I can always get back there. So, <laughs> screwing up and dying is a definite maybe. So, we definitely want to keep pneumatic burst up as much as possible. It's our, like I said, one of our main core defense abilities. Um... It's also going to keep our casting speed at about 200%. I don't actually have this guy's default casting speed at 200. It's at like 180 something. So, <laughs> it might even be at 1... No, it's at 180 something. It's like... I'd have to look. <laughs> but yeah, I don't actually have his casting speed maxed out. Nor do I have his run speed maxed out by default. The reason for that is because I'm running pneumatic burst. Ah, we... Oh, he was reflective. That's why I got hit. Oh, reflective. Definitely, definitely one of the bigger pain in the ass abilities um, now because of the way devastation works. I tend to not devastate reflective mobs. Whoops, as much. That was supposed to be a devastation. I always hit the wrong button on this character because it's in the... I'm used to where it is on my Aether Ray guy, where it's just right above my middle finger. Um, button. So the reason, the reason for Devastation... Jeez. Um, I want to find a good group to actually Devastate. Here we go. I did it again! <laughs> no, wait. Is it? Oh, it's right there. I, I have it on different... I have, like, three characters right now with Devastation. It's on different buttons for all of them. So, I'll occasionally hit the wrong button there. Devastation now in build 30+, plus is really awesome. It's, uh... Just because you can just fire it, and it just... 
wave after wave lands and lands and lands and lands and you can sit there and do all of your your normal abilities while just letting devastation do work So like I said, part one of our strategy is to keep keep um, pneumatic burst up as much as possible. Part two would probably be throw out devastation waves as you need them. That's a good place for it, right there, right in that doorway. So you can see how this this build actually can kind of become um, insanity, I guess would be a good word for it. Yes, yes, you can stun me. <laughs> you can stun, like, man, I forgot. There are some certain, like, mob spawns where they're uh they have like that rainbow beam thing coupled with a ton of other abilities like they're they're basically like the Mary Sue's of the spawns that happen in this game So the really, really fantastic thing about Myvin's or Myvin's sphere, uh, Penendi's replicating missile, is just how much you fire with it, because it like it doesn't deal eighth array levels of damage to single targets, and that can make boss fight, boss fights a little long. I mean, but not really. <laughs> it's it's like they they're a little long, but they're not like atrociously long. So it's like, yeah, they're not as as like, oh, it's a 30k crit on a single target that you've destroyed the resistances on. It's it's you know, 7k, 8k crits. It's a you know, it doesn't look as big, but. You'll clear out rooms without realizing what you're doing. So it's like you... <laughs> you you end up just... Dealing damage to everything. And it's like, because they, they pass through... And then replicate. And then pass through and replicate. And then pass through and replicate. It's... It's like you're gonna get these, these missiles just flying everywhere and each one has a chance to proc a little tornado each one has a chance to replicate off itself and it's just like you'll you'll just fill rooms with just chaos of elemental damage and aether damage it's just awesome and i apologize for the clicking that is going to fill this video end to end. Don't need these guys void touched. So when, uh, as far as I know, when Devastation procs the Clairvoyant set ability, don't immediately recast, uh oh, oh, that was close. Um, don't immediately recast Devastation because I think you can't, like your Devastation wave will get replaced. I definitely need that shield steel. Just a little piece of advice on how devastation works. You can also, if you look, like I'm shooting these guys over here, down in the corner, but like we're killing these guys up here because the Panetti's missiles can split off of each other and then the split missiles can split and the splits can split 
So it's like, it's just a really awesome just room sweeper of an ability. And it's also, it's also really funny to shoot them in a room and then like, you'll, you'll not even realize you've been clearing a room out this entire time. I kind of realized I just have to, oh, god damn it. <laughs> I have to move on here because we're, we got to go into the rest of the Steps of Torment. Get that stupid book. We also get full advantage of both Electra's Flash Freeze Elemental Reduction and the Elemental Reduction on um, from Night's Chill. It's actually a really, really nice combo of things. Because we aren't specifically shooting for like cold or fire, so we get the advantage of... We're shooting for like all three. So we get the advantage of all of them. Now, if I had one complaint about the chaos you cause with your elementals, uh, it's, it's, it's you'll end up like whiting out a room and you can't see Jack a lot of times. And that can actually be annoying sometimes. So, I mean, yeah, we just killed Zarthus Ellen and it wasn't too, wasn't too difficult. In all honesty. So we're going to collect our swag. And go through the doors. Now I'm going to attempt the room of death. So we may not actually get the Tome of Fates. Um, in this video. Because if I die in the room of death. Which is. You know. A distinct possibility. Um. I mean, I'm not above showing that characters can die. So dying in the room of death is, you know, possible. And, um, yeah. That means we just won't get the archive this time. In Tome of Fates. So that was a perfect example of not seeing anything going on underneath a group of enemies. Because... I was sitting there shooting the ghosts, and the ghosts are basically in these these intense glows of stuff. So, yeah, I just lost them. So I just had to sit there and shoot and hope I was actually killing the ghosts. Did his body roll? Oh, he's right there. Ah. He's in the wall. I thought he died and rolled out of the map. But no, he was just in the wall. He was like right there. Very weird. Alright, here we go. The only thing I had to be very careful for is if there's a reflective mob. Because... Reflective is like the worst, worst, um, the worst spawn you can get with this guy. Because you're just firing out so many missiles, like you can be hitting. Ooh, we got a legendary. Oh, Invoker's Blaze! 
Get her. Give me, give me, give me. Give me. Okay. Oh, and chilled steel. Give me. Okay. I am so, so running out of chilled steel. It's almost scary <laughs> how little chilled steel I have. So that was me using, utilizing the uh, blade barrier. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Okay. Oh, I got revered with the rovers finally. God damn it. This guy just hurts real bad. Yeah, he, he's got, like, the stun and that, like, I think it's, is that bleed damage or is it vitality damage? I can never remember. If there's one weakness to using pneumatic burst as a heal, it's that you'll, you'll end up, like, getting stunned and not having access to it. here oh crap <laughs> I forgot you can't cross over there it's not a it's not a real full room run up here oh stupid monstrosities that's that's the scariest thing in here. Monstrosities in this tiny little room with all those elites running around. And we did it. Hooray. Let's see, chilled steel we need. Searing embers need. Blood. Three. I'll grab the plating anyways. Grab it all. There's maximal loot horage in this room, because I did it. So, we've got... We got the Invoker's Blaze. I can't really equip that. So, it's plus three to Panetti's. Nice. Now it'll give us 50% more elemental damage. Yeah, that'll bring Panetti's up to... Up to 25. So... It's almost uh, really, really capped out there. And when I say I can't equip it, I mean I don't have a uh, enchanted flint on me, obviously. Can't go back to town while we're down here, so we're going to have to live with not having that. Yeah, so even, even if I were to have died in that room, I would have died happy because I got a thing I wanted. Getting away from trap rooms. That skill's not ready. Yeah, and with this character, I'm very unafraid of actually using, like, using a lot of his abilities that are on cooldown, because I know, I know that they'll be back really quickly. That's why we went with Star Pact over, um... Over Reckless Power. Reckless Power does give you casting speed. And if you need casting speed, then go for it. Um, but I think between just the gear you'll pick up and equip. And um, just the gear available to you as an Arcanist and a character using Elemental. You'll get enough casting speed to get to close to 200. Plus you have Pneumatic Burst. So I actually think the cooldown reduction is more important. When you're running a spellbreaker, at least in my opinion. Where the hell am I going? It has been a really long time since I've actually been in this place. Alright. 
traps. So yeah, the, you can see the missiles around me. I'm sure they've been noticeable so far anyways. But those are the, uh, the missiles from the Invoker Shard. The Blaze didn't have an ability, did it? Oh, Elemental Seal. So Elemental Seal is an okay ability, in all honesty. It's not... It's not like... A stupendous added ability. Is that on hit or on attack? So on attack. You'd think it would be with Panetti's, because Panetti's would like just have elemental seals fill a room. But it's actually surprisingly low proc rate. I had it on something while I was leveling the character up. Might have been his helmet, like the devil's crossing helmet. I don't remember if that was on attack or on hit though. So maybe coloring my opinion of elemental seal. <laughs> So I was so impressed by this character that I have decided it's probably going to be the next video coming up in this series that we're doing today to make a... I, I decided to make an Aether Ray character that's a Spellbreaker. Okay, I guess we got a hero down here that we're going to try to kill off. Oh my god, there's so many undead in this little area. <laughs> so we got we have Death Revenant, who was in the Room of Death. And he's back, because it makes sense when it's... It makes sense when it's, uh... Undead. Because they're undead and they just come back. Yeah, I'm looking around for the guy that might have the damn archive on him, too. Man, what a t what a freaking terrible setup for this as well. Because we have to come all the way down here, and then all the way back here. Talk about terrible, terrible rolling. It's like it's, it's like it's my friend playing pen and paper RPG. It's terrible, terrible rolls. Oh, he's right there. I am going to go to El Camos as well. So we can shoot through the doors and it will start to fill the room with missiles. <laughs> and it will start clearing the room out for us. Owie. Yeah, that shade, the guy we actually are hunting down, is really strong. Yeah, I don't mind, I don't mind, like, trying to game this guy by attacking him around a corner by shooting other things. In all honesty. Ah, oh, crap, he teleported. Come on, teleport, teleport on me. So yeah, we have all of our stuff. Like, all of our, uh, our invoker little freebie missiles and devastation going, which is how we can get, how we can get to having a lot of damage on the outgoing, you know, a lot of outgoing damage mixed with, uh, Blade Barrier. That would be a perfect example of how I do that. Oh, 
Okie dokie. Come on. Come on. Ah! It's a it's a really fun combo actually. Wow. That's if I had one one huge criticism of the build, he is squishy. Like barely above 7k health. Barely above 7k health, and all of his defense is based around healing himself. So yeah, he's a little on the, oh, I got hit once and all my health is gone side. But I mean, for the most part, though, he's he's doing really great in ultimate. And like, yeah, I have, yeah, I have, uh-oh. I got caught on an enemy there. And you know, I do have the clairvoyant set, yeah, but this guy actually started ultimate without the clairvoyant set, and he was doing really great. The Spellbreaker is just a really powerful combination, and I probably, like, the, the Arcanist and the Soldier are probably your easiest easiest two for handling what ultimate is and you can combine them with pretty much any class in the game and it makes whatever the first class better with what their their defenses are the defenses that that soldiers and arcanists bring to the table are really big and really great but together I actually think they're not Oh man, another, another, oh, there goes my HP moment. <laughs> um, and together they're great. Battle mages are great. I mean, obviously I've, I've played through all of Ultimate, and that's what I did for my, my recording for Ultimate was with a battle mage. But I actually think the Spellbreaker might be a better... Uh, a better combination of things in terms of oh god damn priests I think the spellbreaker might be a better combination of things um, in terms of its ability to handle ultimate easily um, yeah I think we gotta go up it's been a really long time since I've been in this part of the steps of torment Another character in a wall. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I most of what I've been doing lately in Grim Dawn has been leveling up characters, so it's like I never come down here because I never farm. I never do like farming at all. I just have to go and like level up characters. That's all I've been doing lately. So a lot of what I do in Grim Dawn is. Like I don't play, I don't, I don't go into the areas that aren't necessary for advancing the plot, or advancing a character's experience. So I never come down here. And we got another weird formation of things for this, this level.
And now I'm gonna just try to hurry and get to El Camos already. That's usually a bad thing, a bad sign, because I get impatient, and now I'm like, I just want to get to El Camos. Well, I'm gonna die soon, because I'm impatient now. But yeah, um, I, I have an Aether Ray guy who's a spellbreaker now, because I was so impressed by this class, I wanted to try it with Aether Ray. Um, yeah. You know what, Alcamos, your trap can keep that ectoplasm. Hard to see enemies sometimes through all of the elemental uh, craziness you create. Is there a good chest right here? No. Oh no, it's in here, isn't it? That's the chest I'm thinking of. Jeez, almost there. We got two of the worst formations for this place I've ever seen. We might die right here, because I can't get away from this monstrosity. Okay, there we go. So those missiles, um, there is no limit on them, but there's a limit on how long they're out. So it's rare to have more than four going at any given time. I have had six. I think six is the most I've ever gotten out of that. Yeah, also, um, these hit really far away, so there are certain bosses and enemies that become really easy with the, with Panetti's replicating missile. So we're going to go just inside the door. I need a Horfrost ointment. Um, what's my Vitality is at? Ooh. God damn it. So we are going to need Vitality Res. Cold Res is maxed out. I don't think he does anything other than Vitality and Cold. Here we go. Oh god, this is going to take forever. <laughs> Yeah, also, uh, 
Blade Barrier is great if you have to like scratch your nose or something. Got him. So let's see what we pulled. Actually, it's another piece of the Invoker set. I'm not that lucky. Nope, Empowered Banshee's Misery. I can't carry anymore. Ooh, that's new. That's legendary. Oh, neat. A Blackwater cocktail character may be in the near future. So, uh, that'll about cover... All of... All of a Panetti's replicating missile character. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time. And in case anyone was curious, uh, this kicked it above 10,000 DPS for the missiles. And the missiles are at about, you know, 5,000 ish each. Damages are pumped up over 700 for cold and lightning. Almost 700.